All right. It is January 6, 2.30 in the afternoon. Bad news is I have to go to work, and I'm not going to be back until 10.30. But tonight, I'm going to shoot the Orion Nebula in, Orion, in the constellation of Orion. Um, it's a super bright target, really, uh, really beautiful target. Um, I'm going to try to get uh, two nights worth on it. I'm going to make this a two-night project because I won't get as much time on it tonight because I'll be getting back later. It'll be already uh, up high and setting towards the uh, southwest sky. But uh, hopefully it will go well and I'll be able to get a couple hours on the Orion Nebula. It's going to be a cold night tonight, a uh, low of 26 degrees. So it will be quite cold when I get back, but uh, it shouldn't be a problem. It'll actually be a lot better for the camera sensor. So, follow along with me in this uh, Orion Nebula adventure. Alright, so I have my telescope balanced and all hooked up. Um, I might be able to get a polar line before I leave, but it might not be dark enough, so we'll see. But uh, other than that, I will see you back when I uh, start shooting. So I uh, will start filming again when I get back from work. Alright everybody, it's about 12.40 at uh, night right now. I got back from work about an hour ago. I got everything set up. I'm shooting three minute exposures at ISO 800 on the Orion Nebula right now. I should be able to get around three hours on it tonight. But the, the thing that's really killing me, and it always has been a problem with me uh, shooting the Orion Nebula, satellites. The satellites always are in the frame and it makes me delete like over half of my data which sucks and uh, that's why I'm gonna combine today and tomorrow and maybe I can get a good amount of data but uh, the guiding is going well I'm doing like 1.7 total error so it's going well and uh, one one person commented on my uh, videos um, he was saying he had the same setup, and I think that's really cool that uh, some of the people that's watching my videos have uh, got the same setup as I do. Um, and he was talking about getting into guiding, so uh, I think that's uh, pretty cool that uh, other people are, are getting the same setup as I am, and uh, it works well for me. So the one thing that I would like to upgrade in the future would be my camera. Um, I would like to get like a dedicated astronomy camera. Um, I like the ASI 294MC, but uh, I'd like to find a deal on that sometime, but for now everything is uh, working well for me. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was uh, really cool for somebody to have the same setup as me. So, uh, Orion is starting to descend into the southwestern sky towards the light dome of Bowling Green that's uh, out to the southwest there about 15 miles away still a pretty significant light dome to the southwest so I'm using that Itis LPS D2 light pollution filter so that should help but uh, the exposures look great I'll uh, flip the camera over to the laptop and show you real quick all right so there's my frame right there shooting the Orion Nebula three minute exposure at ISO 800 and it's looking pretty good 
I'm uh, controlling it all from APT. And uh, I'll stretch it here. You see the satellite? That's the problem. You can see that little streak right there. It's a satellite. So that's what's killing these frames. But hopefully I'll get enough. I do still have some older data that I can combine with this as well. So, take a look at my guiding. Perfect guiding at 1.4 error. Looking good. With the Star Adventurer, there is no declination uh, motor. So, uh, it's just a manual declination. So, guiding with the Star Adventurer, you're only guiding in right ascension. And with that, you can do right ascension only dithering, which is a total game changer for deep sky astrophotography. Um, before, uh, I would not dither, it'd just be stacking the same picture on top and top and top over and over again. And you would get this walking noise that would just streak in one direction and it would just totally degrade your image uh, to where it's just not good quality but when you start dithering it every after every frame the mount moves just by a few pixels and that keeps those pixels separated where it will decrease that noise so for the past two months now I've been dithering and uh, it's just drastically improved my images so if anybody has a star adventurer and has a small telescope like I'm using, like the Wim Optic Xena Star 61, um, definitely start auto guiding and dithering because dithering is a game changer. Uh, another thing is just uh, make sure you're balanced good. That will really drastically affect your guiding because um, I've had nights where my guiding is just really bad and I've had I've gotten mad and everything and I've just stopped but uh, for the past few times it's worked really well just make sure you have good balance no cable snags and stuff like that uh, select a good star but uh, it's going great right now all right guys it's night two of my session on imaging the Orion Nebula I got about two and a half hours worth of data on it last night. I shot until about 2.30 in the morning and uh, then I started to see the roof of the house and my frame so I shut it down and I, I covered up my scope. I've got a little car cover bag covering up the telescope and on top of that I have a, just a small trash bag to keep the frost out of it. But last night when I got back out here everything was covered in heavy frost like it was like snow almost it was just really thick and heavy uh, frost so I just wrapped my camera up in a little towel and to, uh, when it melted it wouldn't seep in there or anything so hey Hoss you're back there hey Hoss hey there's Hoss but uh, right now it is cloudy but it's supposedly gonna clear off at about seven o'clock or six o'clock yeah six o'clock um, and stay clear until about 1 a.m. So hopefully I'll be able to get about five, six hours on the Orion Nebula. Should be a uh, really, really good picture if tonight works out. And I also have some older data I can add to this project as well. So this is going to be a pretty big Orion Nebula project. Uh, but it's about four o'clock in the afternoon right now. And I just came out here and... Uh, checking on everything so join me in night two of this uh, Orion Nebula project.
now and uh, I'm just waiting for these clouds to move out. They're really slow moving clouds, but there is a clearing. I don't know how long it's gonna last. A couple hours, probably. Um, but I'm just waiting for these to move out. And in about an hour or so, I'll probably be shooting. Hoss is here waiting with me. And uh, it's gonna be about 28 again tonight. I'm gonna feel about like 22, so another cold night. So I have my target framed up on the second night of imaging the Orion Nebula and it's time to start uh, doing test shots and start shooting. I'm going to do uh, some short exposures first to do a high dynamic range image and then do my long exposures at ISO 800 doing 3 minute subs. A um, little windier than last night but uh, it shouldn't affect anything, it's just a slight breeze every once in a while. Uh, Orion has just popped up over the trees just enough for me to frame it up so uh, let's get shooting. Alright so I just started my guiding uh, and it's going well. I just started it, got done calibrating and it's at 1.4 again so I've been getting great guiding for the last few times I've been using this so I'm really happy with that. Um, now it's time to start taking the first shots. Here's my buddy. So there's those 10 second exposures I'm going to use for the uh, core and now I just started my 3 minute exposures. Alright and that is my first 3 minute exposure of the night. I uh, got 2.5 hours like this last night but I'm sure I'll have to delete a lot from the satellites but uh, tonight I'm, I should be able to get a lot like maybe 6 or 7 hours uh, on it so uh, yeah all right everybody um it's uh 12 30 at night right now and i'm gonna shut everything up for the night and do darks and bias frames um clouds have rolled back in and uh i got about five and a half hours worth of data on it tonight on the orion nebula bad thing is those satellites really killed a lot of those so we'll see how uh how much time i have on it usable tomorrow um but thanks for watching this two night uh, Orion Nebula project video. So uh, hopefully I'll get a good picture out of it. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And I'd like to thank all of my subscribers. We are at 106 subscribers right now. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, thank you guys a lot for all the comments and likes and views and all that stuff. So. Uh, until next time, clear skies, and thanks for watching Astro Pilot.